Kyle, was there a little bit of a time where you like, kind of just settled down? Were you a little amped up at the start of that game? I guess, was there a particular point where you kind of felt like you settled in? Um, yeah, I felt like early on, on um, that first drive, I thought we did a pretty good job of moving the ball. Uh, made some plays, not something like that, but a field goal up. Um, but I think uh, just, for me at least, I feel like I just needed to eat into the population more. Um, you know, obviously they're a really good D line, uh, but I thought our line did a really good job today. And I felt like the more and more uh, plays we started running, the more and more they started to down. So I felt like we did a good job. Continuing to, to play, and uh, I need to do a better job like, early on. Just, uh, I want to take your last time. Calm and fine. You just led your team to or helped lead your team to a win on the road after the day, but another top 10 show here Jordan. at home against Penn State. I guess, how have you seen your own confidence grow? I guess, where, where do you see yourself being now compared to where you were on that road trip to Blue Mountain? Yeah, I think the biggest thing, uh, like you said, is the, the confidence factor of it, um, just the comfort level, too. Um, I feel like the offense we've definitely grown. Um, you know, I feel like we did a good job of moving the ball today. I felt like a few times in the red zone, you know, we saw it on the seat. I did put up a touchdown, but for the most part, um, especially in the second half, I feel like we were really moving the ball um, how we wanted to. And so I think it's just continuing to figure out how to take those next steps and continue to uh, put points on the board. But obviously, the defense played lights out today, so I think we can really just, um, you know, mix our, our um, offense and over the second row left, Lori Schmidt, Columbus Dispatch, and then Nathan Barrett. Kyle, I'm sure you're a guy who's aware of what's going on in the college football. No, that's if you think the win like this does for you guys? Yeah, I think uh, a top 10 win, I think week seven or eight in the college football season, that means two top 10 wins. Um, so I think. Uh, in terms of resume, I don't know if you know we could have a better resume right now, uh, but that doesn't mean anything if we don't continue to win, uh, don't continue to stack these games. Um, and I think ultimately, everybody in that locker room knows, you know, it's the next game mentality, and as long as we continue to keep winning, everything else will take care of itself. Speaking of resumes, real quick, um, reading between the lines of Brian Day's comments up here, you seem to be stumped with Marvin Harrison's size. Um, you see him every day. Can you speak to him? Yeah, I mean, if it's truly the award that goes to the best player in college football, to see how he's not, you know, in the mix. I mean, obviously, uh, what he's done, uh, especially these last few games, I think, you know, I don't know if we've seen kind of a stretch like that, just how consistent he is, how reliable he is. Um, so, obviously, you guys um, see it just like I do. He's done a great job, and obviously, he's a lot of fun to play with. Right here in the front row, Brendan Gulick, Buckeyes Mountain Sports Illustrated. Kyle, I, I know when you're playing a game like this, you're, you're focused on the game that's in front of you, right? You're not thinking about it every day. But you just referenced you got two top ten wins now in the first seven weeks of the season. How much more confident in your own ability did you feel coming out of that Notre Dame game? And did it help you settle in when you were playing in an environment like this? Yeah, I think, uh, especially a game like that, um, with the type of opponent that it was in Notre Dame, who I think is a really good team, um, as well as the environment. You know, I don't think you can really draw up, especially early on in the year, a tougher game um, for a team to go into, and getting that win was huge. And you know, I know for myself, and I think as uh, for the rest of the team, that was a huge confidence boost just being able to go in there and get a win. Um, and so we obviously got back from that game, tried to break what was wrong, but at the same time, um, you know, we knew that if we can continue to use that momentum, well, it's going to be it's going to be a good year. As a, a quick follow-up, you know, I, there's been a lot of attention from Marv the way he, he makes incredible catches. The, the throw you made to Kate Stover down the scene where he caught the ball over the top of the defender. Can you touch on what you've seen from Kate and his work ethic trying to develop as a receiver so he can go out and make plays like that? Yeah, I think when I first got here, it was Kate's third year, and at that time, he was kind of bouncing back and forth between linebacker and uh, tight end. And then just seeing the work that he's put in, um, over the past few years, especially with uh, Coach Bailey. Um, you know, I think the work speaks for itself. I think he's always been a very physical presence. I feel like he's never um, lacked anything in the run game. Uh, but then just seeing the work that he puts in, uh, in his route running and his balls goes all that, um, I think it's really starting to show. And uh, teams want to you know, give Marvin extra attention. You know, it's going to leave other guys with you know, one-on-one situations like we saw there. And uh, obviously he went out and made a great play, and he's been doing that for the entire season. Over to the left, Nathan Barrett, Cleveland.com. Kyle, a year ago, 
this defense gave up some of those explosive touchdowns and it left the offense at times in a, in a place where now you guys have to go out and sort of make up for that. With the defense playing the way it is this year, and they obviously you know, made a point of improving there, but the way the defense is playing this year, has it changed the vibe around this, this program at all? Like from week to week, is it just a, a different uh, relationship that is, is happening right now? Yeah, I think uh, with the way they've been playing this year, I think it takes the pressure off of the offense. It's not that mindset that we have to go and score a touchdown every single time for us. The game's going to be in jeopardy. Um, so just seeing what Coach Knowles and you know the guys have been able to do, it's been you know I think uh, a huge testimony to their work ethic. Um, you know, I know those guys are putting extra hours watching film, getting all their checks right, and uh, to see them come out and really shut that offense out, you know, it takes a, a lot of off the offensive shoulders. Okay, we're gonna wrap the point of two and done on both sides. We need to start wrapping up with JT Tui Molo in the back over here to the right. Andy Baxter up, Otter and Rolls. Uh Kyle, when you got a game like that and you know maybe you would have liked to play player uh, to play better, but ultimately you get the win. Uh, as a leader of the team, like how do you process that, I guess, in the moment and then after that? Yeah, I mean obviously um, regardless of how you play, getting a top ten win is uh, really good, and um, you know, obviously I think we'll use this one and we keep it rolling. Uh, but at the same time, you go bad and you watch the film. I think I said this when we played Notre Dame. Um, you get a, a top ten win and you go back and watch the film. There's so much room for improvement, and I feel like obviously we've taken steps in the right direction since that game. I think we've definitely gotten better, um, but at the same time, like the, the sky is the limit for this offense and for this team. And so I know going back and watching the film, there's going to be plays. Obviously, I went back. I um, mean, you know, I think it was good, but then there's you know some things that we got to clean up, and you know, I can only imagine how good this team's going to be once we really reach that peak potential. Uh, over to the left, uh, Joey Kaufman, Columbus Dispatch. Kyle, this is the game for Marvin where Rebecca's not here and he's at Penn State with taking for safety help. It seems like it was all focused on their end of trying to take him away and yet he has to stay like he has. What, what, what did he do to say, I think, to allow him to produce as much as he did? Yeah, I think um, regardless of the coverage, um, you know, in the back of my mind, I know there's a good chance Marvin's going to get open. And so anytime they give me uh, an opportunity to get him the ball, and that's what the representative is what I try to do. And, um, you know, obviously he gets the attention that he deserves, and rightfully so. And I think that opens up other guys. But at the same time, you know, you can't double him all game. You can't you know, give him extra coverage all game. And there's going to be some one-on-one -on -one situations. And uh, you know, I've, I've said this and I'll say it again. There's not a matchup in the country with Marvin's one on one that uh, Over to the right, Jeremy Birmingham, Rivals, the podcast. How close do you think the offense is to being where you want it to be? To both yourself personally, but then just the little kicks that seem to be off. I mean, how close do you think it is? I think we're really close. Uh, you know, you go back and you watch the film. And you ask yourself, okay, what is holding us back from scoring on every single drive and small details, and whether that, that's me or O line or receiver, whatever it is, um, you know, it's just it's little things that can easily be cleaned up. And I feel like looking back on the film from week one, there's, you know, there's a lot to clean up, and then I feel like every single week we're getting better and better. So now it's how can we continue to minimize those mistakes, continue to minimize those errors, and continue to build. Because like I said, I think the sky's the limit. Sort of a bigger picture question. How do you develop the chemistry with a wide receiver like Carnell, a young guy? You obviously, years with, with Marv and Julian and Mecca. I mean, how do you develop chemistry with a young receiver? Yeah, I think the biggest thing for him that he really impressed me with was when he got here, he had a really good understanding of just defenses and uh, how his route um, you know, changes based on what they're playing, what, what kind of leverage to attack in a certain route. And so anytime a young guy has that kind of football IQ, it makes my job a lot more easier. And then I think just getting as many reps as you can, as many reps as you can get with him, um, and just continue to build that chemistry. And I think he's taking some really good strides. And um, you know, obviously, I think this guy's going to be that kid, and you know, so so excited to see where his career takes him. Final question for Kyle, Dan Hope, Eleven Week Warriors. We got to wrap it up with JT, please. Yeah. Kyle, you guys have had a knack over in Notre Dame, in Maryland today where when you guys have needed a drive in the fourth quarter, you've been able to come up with it. What do you think it is that's kind of allowed you guys in those clutch moments to find that another year? Yeah, um, I think that's a good question. I think the, the biggest thing um, is what we talk about is just competitive excellence. When 
uh, someone needs to make a play, uh, whether that's me just putting the, the ball in a one-on-one -on -one situation, letting the guy go up and make a catch, or um, someone winning on a route, or the line making a, a good block up front, opening up the run, whatever it is, I feel like the guys have responded to that every single time. And um, you know, obviously, we would like to, to get that going early on, um, but I would much rather uh, have the team say that you know, we started slow and, and finished really well than vice versa. Um, so I think we just need to continue to, to keep building on that and, um, and, and ask ourselves, how can we do that earlier in the game? And one final question from one Tim quick, Yeah, one quick follow on that. Uh, when you see uh, uh, Marvin just break wide open on that track route, I mean, what is going through your mind at that moment in the game that maybe the best receiver in the country is wide open? Just don't screw it up. I and mean, what, what was going on there? I mean, after all the struggle today. You know? Yeah. No, I think um, we had a, or I think they called a timeout right before that play, so we were able to talk it over on the sideline. Uh, we got the look that we wanted, and obviously he ran a good route and got open. Uh, and so it's just my job to get the ball in his hands and, and let him go to work.